I find that when people ask about big data and try to figure out you know, why it's so much more than just a lot of data, what the answer often is is just taking a look at how quickly we are generating data today. And it's not just traditional sources. We have gotten so much better at putting devices that can capture data, whether it be cameras, whether it be internet, whether it be actually what your phone is transmitting at every given time. And all of this data comes together. And one of the things that I think is interesting is that you find that when you look and you say that 90% of all of the data has been created within the last two years, you start to recognize that this is an accelerating amount of data, not just a stagnant amount, but just accelerating. And that's why when people talk about the differences in big data, you have to recognize it's breaking traditional relational database systems. It's breaking the electronic data warehouse, which is our stores of these data. It cannot handle it was never designed to handle this kind of data. I find one of the things that is most fascinating about big data is people really don't understand what it really is. And I'll tell you to start, it is absolutely not a lot of data because there are many places in our society where we've accumulated a lot of data. But that doesn't really qualify as big data. <clears throat> there are many definitions, but I will say that the key definition um, that most people go to is what they call the three V's. Uh, they call it volume, velocity, and variety. So volume is what we started with. There has to be a lot of data, and it's got to be breaking the systems that traditionally you would use in your data warehouses and your servers that you might traditionally use to store your data. Then we talk a little bit about velocity. And that is how quickly is this data coming in? In today's society where there is data being accumulated everywhere, that data from the web, from machines, is being streamed into many, many different databases. And that is the velocity piece. So it's coming in quickly. But the real catch here is variety. <clears throat> and I don't want to get technical in terms of the differences between the different kinds of data, but at a high level, we talk about structured data and unstructured data. Structured data is what you're traditionally used to seeing, rows and tables of data that we will always have. And it comes, our biggest source, by the way, are traditional spreadsheets. There are lots of columnar data. But the thing that is really causing traditional systems to break is this unstructured data. This is the data that comes from social media, from Twitter feeds, from all of the email that goes through our systems, the rich data of sound and video and images. How do you structure those into our traditional systems? And it's when you take all those pieces together and try to understand what big data is, it is that combination of the three Vs that really define it. So when people ask, how is big data going to be changing my life, the first answer I want to give is, if you thought the internet was a big deal, you haven't seen anything yet. Because big data is starting to influence and impact our lives in many, many ways. And I'm not talking about the NSA stuff. I'm talking about all the ways every day that you're starting to see big data having an impact on your life. If you are using a navigation system that's on your smartphone, in all likelihood, that's all big data in the background there. It's amassing data. Now, why do you think a company like Google made a choice to purchase a company, a little company, called Waze? Well, they made that choice because they saw the connection here, the idea of taking Every person driving around in your area, their speed, their communications, what their information they're passing around, the um, fact that they saw a police officer, the fact that they saw a pothole, 
all of this information is being amassed and brought together in new, brand new technology that allows you to process this data in ways that you can't even imagine. And think about what it means when we start to take advantage of this type of data. Uh, an example that I think of many times is about the, the jet engine. Um, an airplane in and of itself on a given day is going to make multiple stops. It's going to be landing and taking off. And every piece of that flight is captured by that jet engine. And that's called machine data. And that's data that machines are capturing. And they capture it via what is onboard computers, but also by sensors and all kinds of other information. So if you can imagine that a typical flight is going to capture about 240 megabytes of data on a typical flight. Now take that one flight multiplied by a given day. So now that plane maybe went, made five flights. Let's call that a terabyte in rounding numbers. So that airline on a, that one piece of aircraft is capturing a terabyte of information. Now that terabyte of information multiplied by every plane in the air on any given day, then amassed Imagine how all of a sudden you can start to get insights on how to make that plane run more efficiently. You start to see that maybe we can change the way the jet engine works so it maximizes energy efficiency. And for an airline, energy efficiency equals dollars to the bottom line. And these are the kinds of things that happen in just a few little places. But you, today, it is starting small, and you're going to start seeing it in every part of your life. You know, when I look at the future for big data, um, I really think it's early days. Um, as much as it's, it has a lot of flash today, um, they talk many times, um, it's actually a model that Gartner comes up with, which after there's this whole sort of frenzy, there's this trow of disillusionment that happens. And we are actually just coming out of that trial of disillusionment because we had all this promise and then you're saying, okay, so what, what can I do next? The technology is moving so quickly. The operating systems to handle it are moving so quickly. The prices of memory are dropping so quickly. Things that used to need to have disks to do now can be done in memory. All of these changes are going to allow big data to start delivering even more than what we're seeing today. And I, I caution people to kind of, that say, well, it's just all hype. It's not all hype, and you haven't even begun to see how you can take this kind of information and the kind of insight that you can get. I think about um, a, a great example is, is what's going on in, um, with NASA and what they've been capturing images and information for years. But when you start taking that information and, and tying it against existing data, there is incredible information that satellites can tell us today beyond just seeing a pretty picture or knowing what's there. You can do time elapse on the entire planet that shows deforestation, that shows water flows, that gives insight into our lives that never, ever was imagined. And that's, that's the power of big data. I, I think that um, one of the great things about big data is it is finding its way into so many places that people never imagined that you could be lever leveraging big data. I think that um, one of the places is certainly sustainability. And business uh, today and corporations today have gotten to the place where a lot of the low-hanging fruit of changing their light bulbs and doing some changes to their supply chains and doing the things that they know that they could bring some immediate dollars in, they're exhausting those resources. The next level of sustainability for, for business is really going to be around leveraging big data to change operations, to be able to leverage big data to do things that allow them to save energy allows them to reduce their carbon footprint, that allows them to be more efficient about how they use water, 
And all of this begins to happen as they start accumulating the data from machines, accumulating the data from their operations, melding that with consumer information, and that is a huge piece of how business is going to be leveraging this against sustainability. But I think another part of this is how many areas of traditional sustainability will have incredible impact by big data. Let's talk about how we deal with animals and preserving animal habitats. Let's talk about how we deal with some of our most pressing issues of humankind, how we're going to feed a population that's going to reach 9 billion by 2050. These kinds of resource issues will not be solved by traditional means. And what we're seeing is companies that are able to start taking weather data and start incorporating what we know about climate change today and start leveraging to make farming more efficient, to change the way that farm insurance works, to start utilizing, uh, if you can imagine, there are gonna be machine data coming from seeds. The seeds are gonna have data within themselves that will be able to transmit the efficiency of those seeds and how they're doing. There is going to be m massive, massive amounts of data today. Farming today, which was, uh, uh, arguably one of the least technical businesses around will become one of the most technical businesses. Companies like Mans Monsanto are making huge investments in technology. Deer is making investments in technology. All of these companies are because we all recognize that in the future there is going to have to ch be change in how we f go about raising plants, raising animals, raising enough food to feed this ever-growing population.